Hey everyone, I'm Kofo Lasaki, and you're watching Tidewater Waves. Thank you for coming out, Kofo. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. I don't oh. often get to uh, do the interviews. I'm usually conducting them, so this is fun. Right, on the other side of the camera. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for coming out again. We like to highlight people in media, especially black women. That's yeah. me. Black, hey, <laughs> yes. Black woman magic. Yeah. You know, we, we're doing our best. We yeah. are. So, but, you know, I'm definitely a fan of, you know, what you do, um, your professionalism, how you report. So I wanted to invite you up here just to speak on who you are, mm -hmm. what you do, how you learn your craft, et cetera. So we can just start off who you are, um, who are you and where are you from? Uh, so, again, my name is Kofo Lasaki and I am from Kennesaw, Georgia. Um, that's a suburb north of Atlanta, and I was pretty much born and raised there until I went to college. So, um, yeah. Okay. So growing up in Georgia, what I know it's a, um, nice area, you mm -hmm. know, city for just, um, it's kind of like one of the bigger, you know, cities, like, even though you're not f directly from Atlanta, mm -hmm. but from that area. Um, so, you know, what was the influence around there, if any, to get you into media? Um, well, my, both my parents always were news watchers, you know, 60 minutes on Sunday was regular, you know, when my mother was cooking, she was always watching the news. So I was always, you know, my influenced by, of course, what's in your household. Um, my parents are divorced, but they both, you know, still very heavy news watchers. And, um, I was always very vocal um, as a as a person, I think, and you know, both of my parents never stif stif stifled that, stifled, um, you know, being vocal, and so I was just always interested in um, people, and that kind of led me into getting into news. Okay, and doesn't buy wealth with money. I want to get into that. What does that statement mean to you? So you're you're asking me this because my full name is <laughs> Kofo Warala. Um, yes, I'm Nigerian. And Nigerian names usually um, have a meaning, and my name means doesn't buy wealth with money. Um, that name means, you know, that wealth um, is more than just monetary. And, you know, someone who's wealthy, um, who's truly wealthy, is wealthy in all aspects of their life, and that that just can't be bought with no matter how much money you obtain. So you really have to um, find your your wealth um, in life through other means besides just financial. Right. Yeah. And I see that in you. You know, we've had a few conversations off camera, and just you know your spirit, your oh, like. Thank you. Oh no problem. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Really. Yeah. Shines through. <laughs> and I'm a big um you know supporter of that uh, statement, that meaning, mm -hmm. you know, it's like not true wealth. You know, you can have money, paper money, whatever, but if you're not true to yourself and really have a meaning with life, then it's just, what does the other stuff mean? So, Are you really wealthy? I don't know. Exactly. Got to live up to your name, you know? Right, right. Yeah. So I want to get back into the media side. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what was that true moment that was like, this is something I want to do, whether it came in your younger years or you as an adult of, you know, reporting in media. I've always uh, loved the visual medium. I was one of those kids, like not a lot of kids that always had a TV in my room. You know, um, there was always TVs in my house. I, I love film. I love movies. And um, I've just always been interested in people. Um, and I think that's what kind of led me into um, being curious about, you know, the world around me and how to make it a better place by allowing people who um, don't necessarily have a platform to um, give them a platform to make their communities better, to take action upon themselves and, um, you know, be able to speak about things that are important to them. Um, so that's kind of what got me into being interested in being um, a reporter. I majored in print journalism initially, but um, I just found that like I really enjoy um, communicating with people verbally. I enjoy the aspects of the the visual, of course. I don't know that there was any there was like that moment where it was like, 
aha, you know, I kind of just kind of followed a path. I was like, you know, I think this is, I think I can make a difference through journalism. And I kind of just stuck with it and um, it led me to TV. Um, it was never really my goal to be like be on TV. I never had that like Barbara Walters moment where I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I want to be just like her. Um, it just kind of was a natural path. Okay. And you said you majored in print journalism. How was that transition? So you got your degree in print. Uh, so I got my degree in broadcast, but I initially, when I went to college, I thought I was going to, you know, work for a newspaper, you know, that's why I, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, but I like quickly decided to switch my concentration from print to broadcast. Um, because honestly, I just enjoyed the visual aspect of television. Okay. And where'd you go to school? I went to the Howard University, okay. Bison Proud. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Shout out to HU, the real you know? HU. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great experience. Nice, nice. So how did that experience, you know, play into you becoming the reporter that you are today, the, you know, lessons that you may have learned being in the nation's capital? I mean, is there really a better place to be than, you know, Washington, D.C. if you want to do news? I, I don't know. It was an awesome experience because... You know, I was taking my regular classes and then after those were over, I was, you know, heading over to do my internship at like major news um, organizations. I because I was at Howard, I was just the sheer proximity. I was able to do a lot of great internships um, that I wouldn't have had if I went to a school in a different location. Um, Howard really teaches you to be a go-getter, to be a hustler, um, to not give up. What's so great is you see so many people that look like you at Howard achieving and doing amazing things. And it's really in inspiring just to be in that environment. So, you know, Howard really gave me the, t the, you know, the tools to be able to know how to do this job. But it also gave me the um, drive to be able to succeed. Yeah, definitely. I feel like Howard... The environment itself, you know, without it being in D.C., but being in D.C. as that kind of extra bonus. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 special. You ask, you know, most everybody that goes to Howard, it's it's a special place. Um, it really you don't really get that support and nurturing, um, you know, as a black person in every space you go into. But, you know, when you're at Howard, there's always someone, whether you know them or not, that's, you know, going to uplift you. And you just have so many examples to see yourself in um, on campus. And it's a fun place, you know, it's mm. a fun place, but um, they pride themselves. We pride ourselves in, you know, our, our, our hard work and, you know, reaching out and reaching back to help people. So wouldn't be where I am if I, you know, didn't go to Howard. Mm -hmm. And did you ever work uh, with the Hilltop at all with you starting in print? And yeah, so the, the Hilltop is Howard's newspaper. And that was my first time, you know, seeing my my name in print. Um, I started, um, you know, publishing um, as like, I don't know what the, what it was, but like as a basically a freelancer. I like pick up stories every now and again. I still have those clippings from my first story. It was, mm -hmm. a, you know, a big deal. Um, so that was, yeah, a great experience. And having that experience to be able to do that, I did that as a freshman. Being able to do that as a freshman really set me up to be able to get internships as a sophomore and junior and throughout. Right, yeah. So I know you spoke on where you worked in the nation's capital before. Mm -hmm. Did you work or intern at those spaces you were at um, Fox 5, DC, and USA Today? Yeah, um, so I was like an overachiever. And I thought like, well, cause I tell you internships are important. Um, but I thought like I needed all the internships or I wasn't going to make it. So I, uh, two of the internships I did, uh, were Fox 5 DC and USA Today. So those were one, I think my last two internships, um, before I started my professional career. And I, I was, a USA Today college correspondent. So they have like a bunch of different college students um, writing for USA Today College. I don't think that website's up anymore, but it was really cool to you know have my story on a national platform. Um, and I only did that for a little bit because I like had to graduate. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need to stop interning because right, I need to money. get my degree. Yeah. Um, but before I did that, I was at Fox 5 DC. It's the local um, 
a Fox affiliate. Um, and it was awesome. You know, they, I met a lot of great people there. I met, you know, my mentor there and it was a really hands-on experience. I would encourage anybody who might be in the DC area to reach out uh, to do that. Um, and it was important for me getting this job here where I am right now at, um, uh, WTKR because I went back there, um, to work after, um, my first job as a reporter, I went back there because I didn't have a, a solid job that I wanted to move on to next. And they welcomed me with open arms and I met someone there who, uh, referred me for my current job. So it's like, a a full cycle. If I didn't go to Howard, I wouldn't have right, yeah. uh, got the internship at Fox 5. I wouldn't have been able to come back to work there after I graduated. I wouldn't have met the person who helped me get my job here today. So, yeah, so. Thank you. Full circle. <laughs> full circle yeah, it's moments. all connected. Yeah. It's all connected. Yeah. Well, speaking of it being all connected, let's talk about what you do here at WTKR. What exactly is your role and what do you do? Kind of what's your everyday? Yeah. So I'm your local news reporter. Um, every day is, you know, looking for stories that are in the community that are important, that are maybe unusual, um, helping people out. I cover just because of the nature of any city, a lot of crime and, um, you know, I go out, I do the interviews. I usually am working with a photographer. It's great to work with someone else who can help you make the story come together. And, you know, it's a fast paced job, but I'm always meeting great people. Sometimes you cover those um, really tragic stories, but they're always important stories um, to tell. So I'm really lucky that I get to be in, in a fun place like Hampton Roads to be able to tell all kinds of stories here. Mm, right, so uh, you speaking with the photographer that you work with, um, how do you find you all stories? Do they, you know, end up on your desk or do you find your own? <laughs> I wish they ended up on my desk. They usually don't. Um, you know, it's a lot of um, mining social media. Uh, you know, if something's happening in the community, a lot of times people are going to talk about it, talk about it on social media. So, right. you know, I'm in a lot of community pages on social media. Of course, people call and email us with, you know, their grievances or things that they want us to cover. So there's occasions where I'll do that. Um, but it's really up to me to like, find out what's going on and then i basically say here are my top three ideas that i think i can make happen for four o'clock i come in at 9 30 most days and i say all right i go to the meeting and we discuss what what's going on and um by that point we decide what are, what are going to be the best stories managers um decide what are going to be the best stories and then we go out, start making phone calls, and I'm usually knocking on doors of strangers and begging them to talk to me. <laughs> mm, okay. So how is that, you know, talking to strangers, is that something you had to get acclimated with, or did you already have a natural knack for, you know, communications and talking yeah. to people? Um, I don't think I had to get acclimated to it. I mean, sometimes I do, um, you know, get the anxiety where I'm like, ugh. You know, I feel like this is going to be a tough story to get people to want to talk. So sometimes, you know, I have to like overcome that and just do it. But like, I, I like people. I like um, hearing people's stories. You never know. Um, everyone's so different. You never know what someone has to say and you won't know until you find out. So that's, that's exciting to see um, and hear about stories in the community. It's, I, I know it can be scary for some people, but I, I think of it as fun and exciting. Hmm. Okay. Well, speaking of stories in the community, let's talk about national stories. You also worked in Indiana as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you covered the um, Republican primary. So how was that experience with that being such a uh, covered and memorable election? Yeah. So last election, um, Indiana was one of those places where, you know, people are um, in the Midwest trying to win over voters. And I was working um, in South Bend, Indiana, home of Notre Dame. And, you know, Donald Trump came, Ted Cruz came, you know, big, big um, members of the GOP coming to a smaller community is always going to be a huge story. So it was exciting to get to um, see what they had to say and see how they connected with voters. Uh, but it was 
as soon as it started, it was over. Mm -hmm. You know, they come in, they come out. Um, so honestly, it's not even one of my most memorable things I would say that happened, but mm -hmm. it's always exciting to see how big national candidates are going to connect with a local community. Right. Yeah. And I know that was great for your reporting career in terms of getting that experience yeah. with such a huge story you had to be on your P's and Q's. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the national outlets come out. So like right next to you is somebody from, you know, a network who's trying to get tell the same story you're trying right, to do. Right. And a lot of the times, you know, we're all in this together. Journalists are, you know, not really trying to cut each other down. We're all just trying to get our job done because, but it's like hectic. You don't exactly know what's going to happen. So you're just like trying to move as quickly and accurately. And it's a lot of sitting around and waiting for people to show up. And then once they show up, it's like a madhouse. Mm -hmm. And you just have to, you know, make sure you're, like you said, on your P's and Q's. Yeah. So what's your most memorable story? Uh, my most memorable story. One of, I would say one of the things I remember most over and in, in, was uh, a story that made national headlines. And I was uh, working the weekend and, you know, it's a normal weekend. Usually weekends are slow. And then um, my producer calls me and says, hey, we need you to come in early because there was a shooting in Kalamazoo um, by like an Uber driver. And it ended up making national headlines. He um, um, killed, killed this um, man's wife was one of the victims and they lived here locally. Um, so I had, to, well, not locally, but they lived close enough for us to drive to. And so I had to go over there and say, hey, my name's Kofo. I know um, you just lost your wife in a really tragic way, um, but will you talk to me about it? Will you talk to me about her? Will you talk to me um, about the legacy that you want her to leave behind? And those stories are always very difficult. And I think um, that was my first time doing that on um, on a story that would eventually be like a national story. And um, it's really humbling to see how courageous people can be in such a really dark time. And I was able to, to talk to them and be able to accomplish the goal of being able to, you know, tell the story in the time frame that I was given on um, a pretty difficult task. So I think that would be one of the most memorable things. Mm. So you were the first person to report on that, correct? Yeah, we were the, uh, I think, the first person to have an interview. Well, I wasn't, let me not say, I wasn't the first person to report on the story, but I was the first person to speak to, speak to that right. family. Gotcha, um, okay. At that time, yeah. Okay. And, you know, with you being in all these different locations and having these different jobs, um, what is like a dream uh, location or job for you? I don't know. I'm I'm so young. I'm so young and like I don't know where life is going to take me. And I think that's really exciting. I know that cold climates are not going to be my uh, <laughs> thing. my landing spot. <laughs> um, but I, I've been able to go and live in a few different places. And the one thing I've noticed is that there's great people everywhere. You know, I'm from Georgia, so going back to Georgia is always a possibility. You mm -hmm. know, cost of living is nice for the city. But, you know, I've never been to Houston. I've never... Um, L.A. I've have never been, been to L.A.? I have been to L.A. Okay. to visit friends. but And L.A. is fun. Um, but I've never um, spent a lot of time out there. Um, I could see myself honestly being anywhere. I'm really not set or stuck at one place. I guess it's, you know, really where life takes me. Right, right. And yeah, being a reporter, I feel like it's kind of that way. In media, especially so many different stories and locations, how can you just settle down? I mean, you're talking down the road, of course. Yeah. But, I think, yeah. you know, when you start getting, you know, later into life, you, you know, have your roots and right, you're like, right. I don't need to go anywhere and you're more established, <laughs> but I'm young and, you know, opportunities are hard to come by. So if a great opportunity comes um, somewhere that, um, I could see myself living, um, I go there. Mm -hmm. Hence why I'm here in Hampton Roads. Yeah. So we are happy to have you. Happy to be here. Yeah. So where are some of your inspirations? Um, it can be in media or just in general. So I find that I'm most inspired, um, you know, by the people in my life that I come across. I've 
lucky to be surrounded by a lot of um, friends and who are just, you know, go-getters and achievers and people who, you know, don't necessarily come from great means but have um, made great things happen. Those are the most inspiring people. I don't really have like a um, an icon that I look to. Um, you know, I just look to be surrounded by people who are always bettering themselves and um, I'm always just inspired by how people overcome, you know, obstacles to really, you know, achieve their dreams. Mm, okay. So that just made me think about Howard. <laughs> great Howard, people. Yeah. Howard is yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. So Howard's wanna, a very aspiring, inspiring place to be. Definitely. Definitely. So I want to circle back around, you know, what was like your greatest, um, le it can be a lesson or just thing that you took from Howard University. Um, I think you know, the best thing that Howard did for me was to change my outlook and perspective. I came from um, an African family who lived in a predominantly white suburb. Um, my best friend, you know, my best friend and other friends are not necessarily white, but it was predominantly white. So most of my surroundings were white and I really didn't have um, a good connection with the black community. I really didn't see myself grounded in the black community and Howard really opened my eyes to how diverse and beautiful um, black culture is. Um, and that wasn't something that I had really, um, you know, seen a lot of. Um, so I think that was, that was the best thing that Howard did for me. It really um, gave me a new perspective on the different types of black people, the different, and that's such a weird thing to say, the different types of black people, because, you know, we're not a monolith. Um, well, I but feel like that's a... And, it's, and it seems obvious to, you know, people who are surrounded by black people, but when mm. you're not, you know, media can portray us in very um, limited roles. I think, think most recently we've been seeing, you know, an uprising in, um, you know, major mainstream media wanting to take interest in like the diversity in black culture. Mm -hmm. But, you know, growing up, you know, we didn't have Obama as a president. I didn't right, have Obama right. as a president. And I didn't have a lot of um, diverse black cultural figures to look up to. So going to Howard really gave me that. Mm, yeah. And you are that figure now uh, for a lot of people, even though you may not see it that way. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's good to have, you know, people of, you know, that look like you on TV, people mm -hmm. that look like you out in your community doing, um, you know, positive things. That's, and I didn't necessarily see a lot of that um, growing up. So, yes, I hope that I can be someone to um, show a different version of the variety of, um, I don't know, greatness in the black right. community. Yeah, and also I want to touch on the School of Communications, which you came out of, and mm -hmm. uh, you know at Howard, with us both being products. You know, this is a conversation I love to have, as far as you know, um, you know what you learned, or what you took from that uh, school, um, specifically. I think that um, going to being in the School of C, it's a, such a creative place and there's so many different you know journalism is just one major in the school of communications there's a, just a lot of um, very creative people and it, I've already said it but like in the school of C you really have to hustle you really have to you know hustle make things happen and um it taught me that like you don't there's like the linear path and then there's another path right, to go yeah. around there, this way you know yeah. and if there's an obstacle in the linear path you gotta make your own way yeah, to get to happen. the same destination because no one cares that there is an obstacle no, no one cares <laughs> no one cares that there's an obstacle um and the school of c for better or worse um taught me to find a different direction to overcome and to get where i really needed to and wanted to be mm. Okay. Well, and also, uh, before you go, homecoming. We got to talk yes. about that. Yeah. Were you, um, did you attend homecom homecoming this year? Yeah, I went to homecoming this year. It was my first year going back for homecoming. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So nice. that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, seeing everybody. It's, it's all one big family. Even the people like, 
you weren't close with, you come back and it's like, you just want to give them a hug and right, say, yeah, how are you? Oh man, it's, it's a whole community. Yeah, it's, it's family. You know, it's not a, it's a, I guess a medium sized school. I don't know. It's not like a huge school. So you see a lot of the same faces. You don't necessarily know everyone's name, but you see mm. a lot of the faces and everyone is really, you know, rooting for everybody. You know, the, you know, I'm rooting for everybody black. The saying um, popular is by Issa Rae. Uh, that's Howard. You know, everyone's rooting for everybody to like really achieve and succeed. So right, it's fun right. to come back and see where people are a year later, two years later, five years later, 10 years later and um, get up and have a good time. Yeah, definitely. You're five years next year. Five years you going is back? next year. Of course I'm going to okay. be back. Of yeah, course. Gotcha. Yeah, 2020. That's a that's a great uh, year to have in five years. Isn't it? I it know is. it's going to be great. I just feel it. Yeah, no. Well, yeah. So I appreciate you coming, you know, by to just speak on yourself, your craft, um, how you came up, what you no learned. No problem. And, yeah, and, and more so. But, you know, continue to be great. Thank and, you. Thank you. You as well. Yes, we love our sure. black kings as well. Uh, black queens are, <laughs> hey, stop it. Come on. Yep. So where can the people find you if they have stories to report or just want to get in touch with you? Yeah, well, all of my handles are Kofo Lasaki. That's K-O-F-O. Lasaki is L-A-S-A-K-I. That's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay. Well, thank you for coming out again. This is Kofo Lasaki, and we're out.